Good afternoon. My name is 62, and I am your teacher for today. This time, I would like to talk to you about building a nation, building or creating a nation. We must fully understand various vocabularies and the people so that we can follow with the rest of the lesson. Okay? Very well. Now, let's start the vocabulary. Number one, Victorians. Everybody say, Victorians. Yes. Okay, Victorians. Victorians are the people that lived during the reign of Queen Victoria. This one. Okay, but let's learn about that later on. Victorians are the British people that lived during the time of Queen Victoria in 1837 up to 1901. These are the Victorians. Okay? These are the people, the subjects or loyal subjects of the Queen. And number two, colonies. Colonies or in other words, territory. It's a part of territory. For example, the colony of um, England is Canada. Okay? Canada is not England, and England is not Canada. However, as part of colony, Canada is a territory of England. All right? That is colony. When we say colonies, it means more colonies, more territories. Just like in Lower and Upper Canada, these were the territories of the British Empire, of England. So, Lower Canada and Upper Canada are both colonies of England. That is colony or colonies. Confederation. Everyone say confederation. Okay, very well. Confederation is an act of people coming together. Different classes from the upper class, middle class, lower class, and everyone in the society, when they come together in unity, they come together and work as one unit, as one organization, that is called confederation. People coming together and working together as one. Confederation. Okay? Very well. Next. Rebellion loses bill. Rebellion loses bill is a bill or it's a law. That says that during the rebellion or during the time of rebellion, many properties were destroyed or damaged. And after the rebellion, this bill is saying that it's going to pay or the government is going to pay for any loss, any loss during the rebellion, any property, any, um, for example, your house was destroyed, your farm was burned, and all your properties were destroyed, the government is going to pay for your loss. And that is bill, it's a law. During the rebellion, Meaning, when your property was destroyed during the rebellion time, you're going to be paid how much? 100,000 pounds. Okay, that is the payment. That is a bill. It means the rebellion loses bill, meaning people will be paid when their property was damaged during the rebellion. Okay? Good. Now, I want to introduce three famous people. 
Number one, Queen Victoria. Of course, you know, Queen Victoria is the queen. She is the subject of all this lesson. Okay? She is the one, the center of everything. Because Queen Victoria is the ruler of the Victorian people. Queen Victoria was the queen of England when that was in 1837 up to 1901. And number two, Lord Durham. Lord Durham is a British politician. Okay? Lord Durham was sent to Canada to investigate the reason why was there a rebellion. Because there was a rebellion, the British Empire is going to investigate. So, Lord Durham, a British politician, was sent to Canada to investigate. That was his rule. He went to investigate what happened. What made the people in Canada go against the government? That was his task. That was his part to investigate. Lord Ilgin. Lord Ilgin is another politician who is in Canada. He is the governor of Canada. Okay? I repeat, Lord Ilgin was the governor of Canada during the time. And when he learned about the report of Lord Durham about the result, why did the Canadians or the people in Canada made a rebellion? He signed a bill. This one. He signed a bill authorizing the government to pay for everything that has been damaged during the rebellion. And also, he made people, um, those who does not favor this um, rebellion, let us feel, he made him very angry. The people who were against the payment of the rebellion loss were very angry at Lord Elgin. However, this was the beginning of good governance. The beginning of a new government. It was a good government. Rebellion to go against the government. The colonies of Queen Victoria were Upper and Lower Canada. I repeat, the colonies were Upper and Lower Canada. In 1837, there was a rebellion. It lasted for one year until 1838. What happened? Why was there a rebellion? The people from Canada, Upper and Lower Canada, did not think the British were doing well in governing Canada. So, they rebuilt. They made this thing, or they had a rebellion because they can no longer work with the government. They can no longer do what the government is telling them to do. They are not happy with the government. So, they wanted a change. That causes the rebellion in 1837 up to 1838 in Lower and Upper Canada. Now, because they were few in numbers, they were defeated easily. They had no other choice but stop because they are just few. And 
The British army or the British Empire is very powerful during this time. They were defeated only for one year and no more. Now, after the rebellion is over, in 1838, people in Britain or in Great Britain, in the Isles of Britain, here, in the British Isles, many people moved to Upper and Lower Canada to seek for a better future. Many were very poor, many were very rich, many were the middle class, but everyone moved because they wanted a better life. Now, in doing so, when the British people went to Canada, the French were outnumbered. Originally, Canada is the home of the French. There were people in Canada which were the French. But because of the immigration, many people migrated to Canada. There was an imbalance of population. And the population grew and grew and grew, and the French were outnumbered. In 1841, Upper Canada and Lower Canada were joined together to form just one province. Okay? That is, Upper and Lower Canada joined together became the province of Canada. That happened in 1841. Now, let's take a look at Queen Victoria. Queen Victoria reigned 64 years from 1837 to 1901. She reigned the British Empire and she taught the British people or the Victorians, the people who lived during her reign are called Victorians. She told them good morals, um, good attitudes, good values, and many more. And during this time, Britain was known to be the world's greatest superpower, or Britain was the world's superpower. That it is no one that, I mean, that no one could ever challenge Britain during this time because they are the best, they are the greatest in the world. The world's superpower, Britain. And that is in the reign of Queen Victoria. of our lecture building a nation let's take a look at the Victorians rich and poor the rich and poor during the time of Queen Victoria but in the 1800s in Great Britain the quality of life depends on the social life on the class that you belong it's the social class. There are three different classes. Number one, the upper class. The upper class are the aristocrats. They are the rulers. They rule the place. They rule any given territory or colony. They, they serve the aristocrats. They are very rich, they have a lot of money, a lot of servants, and many, many more properties. Next is the middle class. The middle class also are very rich. They have a lot of servants. However, they are not aristocrats. They do not belong to the ruling class. They do not rule. They are ruled by the aristocrats or the upper class. Although they have much money, but they are not rulers. The third, these are the lower class. 
The poor in the society, the workers, the lawless. These are the poor people who work for others so that they will have some money. Now, let's take a general look at what went wrong or what, how was the life in that era. During this time, workers are not paid very long. They work very long hours, long hours of work and six days in one week. No vacation, no health care, no insurance, no welfare, and no government assistance. Everyone in the family must work. The rich com continuously become rich. The poor becoming poor more and more. Now, now let's take a look at the ultimate solution that these people resourced. Because life was so hard, so they had to think of something that they can do to improve their life. And this is to go. Where? To go to Canada. Here. Lower Canada and Upper Canada. Or even the United States. Now, with so many new immigrants, there are people who came from Ireland, even from Scotland, and others were forced to leave because they cannot do anything. There's, their life is so miserable that they cannot afford to pay their own, let's say they cannot buy their own bread or maybe house or anything that they want in life. Life was miserable. So, many were forced to leave their house leave their home, leave their homeland. And most were desperately poor. Most are the lower class. They don't have anything in them but just themselves. And also their pride. What did they do there? Still they work as manual laborers and others rented farms in exchange of a part of the harvest. Then, many had opportunities. However, still, life is hard and often disappointing. With all these problems, people from different countries or different territories, all gathered in Canada, have something in common which is called their religion. Christianity is the official religion in Canada. And religions have many different faiths. They believe in many different things or the discipline of faith are different. Like for example, the Irish people are the Catholic. They believe in the Catholic doctrine. But the Scots believe on the Presbyterian way. Upper and middle class, they believe in the Anglican way of life. The official religion or the official church in Canada is Christianity. But the official um, church is Anglican. Why? Because the aristocrats are here. The aristocrats rule the place. The aristocrats rule the territory or the colony. All right? We are now on the third and final part of our lecture. Part three is all about Victorian attitudes and values. 
What are the attitudes and values that Victorians show the world that they were became, that they were so powerful, that they were so successful? Let us take a look. In Great Britain, Queen Victoria ruled in this year 1837 up to 1901. And by the time of her reign, she set a very high standard in the British Empire. Victorians stressed morals, morality, hard work, must hard, work very hard, and personal success. If you have morality, if you do, if you live a moral life, and you work very hard, then you are going to achieve your own personal success. Also, Victorians believe in themselves. They, they don't have any doubt because they have a high value. The value is set in their hearts and in their mind. And they don't have anything but value and belief. They are sure of themselves, no doubts. Victorians also place a very high value on modesty, seriousness, and duty. Modesty, live a modest life, seriousness, if you do something, be serious, and fulfill your duty. If you started something, finish it until the end. Do what you must do and what you have to do. It's your duty. Do your best and everything will follow. That is the Victorian age. What happened during this time? In the Victorian age, British Empire grew larger and larger and stronger. And the British Navy was almost beyond challenge that nobody can challenge them. Here, every day, there are new discoveries in science, technology, and medicine. Because of that, people who are living, the British Isles who are living, other territories of Britain going to Canada enjoying everything, every benefit that the empire has to offer. People living in Canada, the British living in Canada think of themselves as British, not Canadians. So they read the newspaper every day and still think of themselves as part of the British colony or as part of the British Empire because they are British who just migrated to Canada. Now, because of this and all of these things that happened, in 1867, Canada finally became a country. Canada becomes a dominion. A country that has its own people, own territory, and own domain. Canada is now called a country, not a province of Canada. Combination of Upper and Lower Canada, no more. It is Canada as a country, not as a province. That's how Canada was built. Canada became a nation because of the people from around coming in. And they settled in the different parts of Canada with all the values, with all the morals, and with all the scientific discoveries and everything. Canada finally became a domain. That, ladies and gentlemen, is how to build a nation. Building a nation 
Okay? I hope to see you. See you in the classroom.